So yesterday, to cap off TwitchCon, the people over at Bethesda, along with some other content creators like uh, Aeolus, for example, were streaming some legends, and they revealed yet another card from the upcoming Frostspark collection. This time they revealed Deathhound. Deathhound is a 5 cost 6-6 six, six with guard. Uh, it is a beast and a skeleton, and its text says that its power is equal to its health, so... Uh, its base stat line is a 6-6, and this is what it would revert to if it was silenced. Uh, but the other part of this is that when it takes damage, it's going to have less and less power. And if it, say, gets some items, like Imperial Armor, Enchanted Plate, even Maple Shield, uh, it's going to get more powerful. Uh, this is a really interesting card because of that ability. First I'm going to talk about competitive viability, and then I'm going to talk about why you still need to be scared of this card. So from a competitive standpoint, this is going to have a hard time finding a home. Uh, the reason I say that is because anytime that you would want to run this as an aggressive player, you're probably better off running White Run Protector. White Run Protector uh, is a 5 cost 4-4, four, four, but has the beast form that makes it a 6-6 six, six guard with regenerate, and that, unless you are... Uh, in need of running a bunch of health items is most likely going to be better. And if you're playing in an aggressive deck, you're not in need of running a bunch of health items. You're not running Enchanted Plate, you're not running Imperial Armor. So White Run Protector gives you most of the benefit without the drawback. Uh, if you are playing as a control player, uh, a 5 cost 6-6 six, six with guard is seemingly a good thing to have, but Kind of, for a while now, the, the days of slamming down big guards and like getting away with that being enough to slow down your opponent has just been gone. There's a lot of silence running around. There's a lot of uh, ways to just flood the board to go around creatures. So this is, on paper, the sort of thing that looks like it might be like a two for one, but it's really going to be like a one and a half for one in most cases. Uh, let me give you a good example, right? Against uh, the aggressive warrior decks that are running around, a death hound is likely going to come down, and if they have like a haunting spirit and a young mammoth in that lane, uh, all you're really doing is eating the haunting spirit. Uh, the last gasp is still something you're going to have to deal with, um, but because it's going to take three damage from the haunting spirit, then that means it's not even big enough to then eat the young mammoth, right? The young mammoth can not only trade into it and survive, but actually get some breakthrough damage in. And that's assuming that the young mammoth doesn't even get the last gasp from the haunting spirit. So this card is not bad, right? Like it's it's okay. Uh, there are some neat tricks that you can do with it, obviously with uh, healing cards. But again, why are you running healing cards? But if you do have something like, uh, you know, healing hands or uh, the plea, for example, then this could take some damage and then you could heal it and then turn around and then swing for an awful lot. Um, yeah, so competitively, I'm not sure this card is amazing. Uh, in arena, it'll it'll be okay. You're less likely to run into those silences. You're less likely to run into that hard removal. So you'll get the expected value out of it, I think, there. You also, just because it's arena, may have healing cards or you may have something like Enchanted Plate, in which case uh, the value goes up. Uh, but now that I've said, like, why this isn't necessarily <laughs> the most competitive card, you still need to be very afraid of this card. If you see this card, it's probably going to be the sort of thing that you should consider killing very quickly, specifically if it's in something like Scout. Uh, people will play this card because it is... A great addition to the existing Ring of Imaginary Might decks. Now, that deck is wildly considered to be a meme, but it doesn't mean you don't run into it every now and then. It's capable of killing you in one turn. If you're not familiar, that deck typically tries to do something like get a Snowy Saber Cat or get something else with a high amount of health, and then you slap Ring of Imaginary Might on it, and then a Swift Strike for the win. So, uh, that deck also runs. Hi, Hrothgar, uh, very similar effect as well. But that, that deck is already running armor or plate or maple shield or all three. So something like this is not a stretch. In fact, if you play this on curve on five, 
and then they slap an armor on it for three and then swift strike for three you're looking at taking an awful lot of damage so when you see this card on the ladder uh, it is my recommendation that you assume the worst you assume that your opponent is probably playing this not because hey it's just a five cost six six because again in most cases i expect this to just not be good enough in traditional use um, but when built around it's very dangerous uh, assume people are building around it there's going to be people looking to have a lot of fun with our, our cute little doggo friend here and uh, you know i don't blame him he's a good boy so yeah assume the worst try to kill it uh, don't get otk'd by it and that's it so let me know what you think i want to see how you plan to use it is there some interaction i'm forgetting uh, do you plan to play Ring of Imaginary Might, OTK, slide this in? Uh, are you going to try to build some other surprise deck with it? Uh, I'm curious. But as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, may you walk on warm sands.